Today, we're going to learn how to interpret a linear function. And we're going to do so by taking a look at the following problem. It says, for the following exercises, use the graph in figure uh, 7, which is listed below, uh, which shows the profit in thousands of dollars of a company in a given year, T, where T represents the number of years since 1980. Okay, so find the linear function Y. Okay, so when they say that, um, and they say where Y depends on T, what that means is that Y will equal some whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, blah, 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 with a T on it. All right, on the right-hand side. That's basically what it equals, okay? Uh, so that's what we're looking for. We're looking for a Y equal to a whole bunch of numbers here and a T thrown in somewhere. I don't know, plus T, who knows, right? But that's the idea. So it says, find the linear function Y where Y depends on T and the number, uh, meaning the number of years since 1980. So uh, let's, so, we first have to start with our linear model, and the linear model is y is equal to mx plus b. You've seen that many of times before. What defines a linear function is two things, only two things, okay? Two things. You got to know the slope, and you got to know the y-intercept, okay? The y-intercept, remember, is when the x value is equal to zero, okay? So, for example, if you were given this function y is equal to 2x plus 7, we can graph this. This, this is a linear function. Um, y is equal to 2x plus b is not a linear function. We have two unknowns. Uh, excuse me, three unknowns. Okay? We, we cannot do anything with this. So um, we have to know both the slope and the y-intercept. So in what this is basically reinterpreting this question, find the slope, find the y-intercept. That's And once we know those two, we plug it into our model here. Okay? That's what they want us to do. So I'm going to erase that for the time being. All right, let's find the slope. Remember slope, or m, is equal to the change in the y value divided by the change in the x value. In other words, it represents now y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, where x2 and y2 represent one particular point on the graph, and x1 and y, well, that's <laughs> that uh, should be a one. See, that's why, oh, sometimes checking the work is good. That should be y1. Let me just put that in red. One second. Okay. And this is now another. Why didn't that color? There you go. That's another point. So let's call it. It doesn't matter now what you call it. So let's call this point here. This one looks kind of nice. Let's call this one the uh, the x, you know, let's call it x2 comma y2. And that x value looks like 25 to me. And the y value looks like 130, right? This is the y on that, and this is the x or the t, okay? Um, okay, so now uh, maybe I'm going to go up to this point now at the top, and we know the coordinates there, right? That's going to be 15, 150 now. Easy, x and y, right? This could be my x1, and that could be my y1. Now, you can call the x, t, and I will do that later on, but for right now, it really doesn't make a difference. So the slope here is going to be now the y2 value of 130, minus the y1 value of 150, divided then by the x2 value of 25, minus the x1 value of 15. So when we do this math now, the numerator works out to be negative 20, over then 10. So the slope here is going to be negative 2. That is the slope. And I just so happened to almost, right, just it almost worked out beautifully up here. So that just works out to be a negative 2, okay? So, so far I'm doing good. I just need to now find the slope, uh, excuse me, the y-intercept. I just found the slope. All right. So that's how we take care of that. So now let's erase all this beautiful work. All right. Now let's find the y-intercept. So remember, I mentioned it before that the y-intercept B is when the x-intercept is zero. In other words, imagine you had to extend this line. Okay. Imagine this line was extended. All right, and imagine we extended this particular, you know, y-axis. There you go. So right here, at this point up here, this represents the y-intercept. And at the y-intercept, the x value is zero. So in other words, we have a value, right? Every every point has a coordinate x, y, and the y and the x value here is zero, and the y value is something. That's what I'm trying to figure out. What is the y value? Is it 200? 
Is it 250? Is it 160? Right? We got to figure that out. Okay. So how do we do that? Well, think about this. We know we have a, a, a linear equation now that looks like this, 2x plus b. What I need to do is I need to solve for the y-intercept. Now remember, every time we know some information, it's very helpful. We know the x, now remember, any this y value and this x value represent the values of a coordinate. So if I'm talking about this point over here, okay, then the coordinates will go into this particular equation. Okay? That's what will happen. Right? So, what I'm going to now do is I'm going to now plug in, then, my uh, values of x and y. Though, when I plug in those values, what happens? Well, I get y. I don't know what y is. The x value is 0 plus b. So all this tells me now is y is equal to b. Does that tell me what it is? No, but it tells me what I told you before, that the y, that the uh, y intercept here is the y value when x is zero, okay? So what that means is that we cannot use this point. We can use any other point. Notice I don't know these two, I don't know what y is, right? But in this point, I know what y is. I know what y is in this point as well. So I can use any other point that's known to solve this. So choose this one. It doesn't really make a difference. So the y value there is 150. The slope we know is negative 2. The x value of that point was 15. Look at this, one equation, one unknown. Boom. There it is. So 150 is equal to now negative 30 plus b. Add the 30 on over to the uh, on both sides, and that's now going to be 180. And doesn't that now make sense? That this should be 180 up here about. Right? And there it is. So now... The whole equation now works out to be y is equal to negative 2x plus 180. Now we know our linear equation. There it is. Boom. Okay. So now it says find and interpret the y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept now over here represents, and this is always what it's going to be, represents the, uh, in this particular case, the profit, profit y at t equals zero, meaning at or in the year of, or at the beginning of 1980. Okay, that's what it means. Find and interpret the x-intercept. So we didn't find that x, but we can do it simply uh, by, right, using this formula. Again, here's my linear model. A y is equal to now negative 2x plus 180. Um, the y, the x-intercept now is where the y value will equal zero. So in other words, I'm gonna plug zero in for y and notice I have one equation with one unknown, meaning I can calculate it. So if I plug in a y value of zero here, then whatever I calculate x to be will be the value of x when y is zero. Add this term on over to the left, so we're gonna get two x is equal to 180, divide both sides by two, and we realize x will be equal to 90. So in other words, and obviously this is not to scale, but if, I, if we had to continue this on down, you can see though that there's a little break here, right? So, you know, this isn't exactly the scale, but this value should be here now 90, okay? So, what does that mean? Um, well, all that means is that if the current trend continues, which it might or might not, be careful with extrapolating linear functions, okay, especially in real life, this can apply to if you, you know, analyze, let's say, businesses or stocks or whatever, be careful of the past trend and extrapolating it into the future. There is no law that says it has to be the same. <laughs> okay? So you got to think about what it might be. Anyway, um, okay. So, you know, th there is real life application to this stuff, by the way. The concepts can apply to real life. Okay? Whether people realize it or not, they do. All right, and it's in terms of the interpretation of things that's very important. So enough with the philosophy and the life lesson. So find and interpret the x-intercept. Um, so the x-intercept here, you know, uh, I have to put a little caveat with it, uh, but the x-intercept is 90, okay? The x-intercept is 90. 90 what? 90 years after 1980. You know, so what will be the year then? It'll be 2,070, 
Okay, that'll be 90 years after. So in the year 2070, this company should go broke. Can you make a prediction based on the linear trend, uh, you know, of, of, of declining profits and so on and so, so forth all the way out to the future? Well, possibly. Depends on what the company's doing, right? Um, it is, there is no law that it will go broke. Anyway, fine and interpret the slope. Um, actually, I think, I think stuff like that, business analysis, complex systems, very interesting stuff. Very interesting. Not just business, but just in terms of uh, complex systems. I find it, I wish I studied that earlier in life. Um, anyway, fine and interpret the slope. Okay, so the slope we actually already calculated before. It was negative 2. What does negative 2 mean? So negative 2, remember, it says that the... Um, the uh, so anytime we have a slope, let me start here. It's always the change in Y over the change in X. So in this case, it's the change in dollars, right? It says linear uh, profit Y, thousands of dollars, okay? So this represents thousands of dollars per single per year right? Because time is in years. So uh, the slope now, we found a value of negative two, but it's not negative two dollars uh, per year. It's negative 2,000 because it was in thousands of dollars, right? So negative two thousand dollars per year. So in other words, that the profit of this company over the period of time, I guess it's being studied, is decreasing by uh, two thousand uh, dollars per year. And by the way, I don't know how many people are going to watch this video, probably seven. Uh, but, and out of those seven, what's the probability that one of you might be interested in business? Um, yeah, I probably, uh, a number that might make the uh, expected value here to be less than one. Um, take a look at Business Dynamics by John Sturman. I think it's a fantastic book about uh, business systems. It's a little complicated, um, but if you really sit with it and you kind of digest it, and uh, it, it, it's a fascinating read. Um, if you read it and you're like, wow, this guy thinks that's fascinating. Oh, boy. He must have some personality. Um, I, think, I think you might find it interesting. So I think it's probably one of the best, many, best, one of the best books I've read. Um, kind of just puts things into perspective a little bit in terms of uh, business analysis. So anyway, um, Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope this video helps. And um, if it does, if you wouldn't mind helping us out, subscribe, like, tell your friends. We appreciate it. And I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.